What's up YouTube? If you are like me and you bought the FCB 1010 looking to use it with Ableton uh, you found that it's out of the box it is not exactly a plug and play like many other MIDI devices where you simply plug it in uh, Ableton will recognize it, you set it up and you go right into MIDI mode and you program all your buttons. This was not the case with this guy and I wasn't really able to find any good YouTube tutorials. The manuals online were a little complicated or they didn't exactly give the instructions for quite what I was looking to do. So since I figured out how to do it, I figured I'd share with everybody. Try to make your life a little bit easier so you don't have to go through the whole process of trial and error like I did. So let's show, uh, show you how to set this up. Because basically what happened was um, Ableton... Once I got it going, Ableton was able to recognize it, but the signals coming in for these guys were pitch bend, which makes no sense for an on and off switch. You know, maybe for the pedals it would work, but uh, so I figured out how to change the MIDI note on here. A lot of the tutorials just teach you about the different MIDI channels, which for me, obviously, I just want it to be universal. Uh, you know, I basically all I care about is I want to hit the button and it triggers an action in Ableton. Pretty simple, right? So, that's what I'm going to teach you how to do real quick. So, what you want to do is you're going to select which button you want to edit. So, we're going to start with one. Number one, good. So, one is lit up. We want to edit one. Hold down the down button. Switch one, switch two. Green light comes on. Good. Hit up to confirm you want to edit the number one switch. And... If you're getting this right out of the box, 1, 8, and 9 light up here. Um, since I've already done this, these are obviously already off. What you would do is just hold these down until the light goes off, until all the lights are out. Then you hit 10 to turn 10 on. Hit it again so that it starts blinking. Right? Good. Hit up to confirm that you want to edit. Now, since I've already kind of gone through this, 1 is already set to 14. That's the uh, MIDI CC note. And I actually don't want it to be that. What I want to do is I want to go uh, 22 through 31. These are undefined MIDI CCs, so they seem like pretty good numbers to program to. Obviously, you can do whatever you want, though it may conflict with any other uh, devices you have. So I'm going to recommend going 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31. Um, there's plenty of guides online, lists of the MIDI CC commands, so you can go through that list and choose whatever works for you. So, uh, I want to make number one, note 22, so 2-2, two, two. good, Hit up to confirm, and that's it, and I'll exit, so now one is set to 22, and if you want to check to make sure it worked, you basically go back to the same thing, hold down, Hit up to confirm, 10, make it blink, hit up, and it's blinking 22, so number 1 is in fact 22, good. And you would essentially repeat this whole thing for each note, so now we're going to change button number 2, so we're going to hold down, hit up to confirm, 10 is on, good, hit 10 so it blinks, hit up. Uh, it's currently set to 27, because I have it be 23, good, hit up to confirm, hit down to exit, or hold down to exit, good. Number three, hold down, hit up to confirm, hit 10 so it blinks, hit up, it's currently set to 12, so I want it to be 24, hit up to confirm, down to exit. And I think you get the idea here. You're just going to go through each one. Okay, good. So let's assume that you have all of your MIDI notes now programmed 22 all the way through 31. Good, right? So what I'm using is a MIDI to USB cable. I didn't have to download any FCB software to edit it, program it. You know, they charge you 20 bucks for this stuff and, you know, whatever. I didn't need any of that, I didn't buy any of it, all I got was a MIDI to USB cable, right? So, let's plug it in. Good, my sound card is hooking up. I'm using a Hercules RMX for my sound card, among other things. 
Let's let that guy get in there. Good. So, Ableton. Let's get the FCB set up. So, this is an empty session I just opened, so just for the sake of this video, uh, let's throw some effects in here. In first channel, I put it through a couple effects in, so let's go into MIDI mode, right? Now, I want to be able to turn this on and off, California Sun, so I click in here. And I'll hit number one. And as you can see, it has assigned a note to that channel. It's a note, it's not pitch bend or any weird crap. So let's just say if I were then to exit MIDI mode, find my mouse. Here we are back in our session. If I were to hit this guy, you can see that I am turning this on and off that easy, right? Not too complicated. And then for looper, let's say I want to record. I record. I hit key six. All right. Get assigned a note to it. Good. The record button and so on and so forth you know play stop undo clear whatever you want to do you can assign these to anything in Ableton as you would with any other MIDI device if needed I can make another video for how to set up these pedals though that was the first thing I was able to set up it was not too difficult but if you're having trouble with the velocity anything like that uh, I can give you some quick little pointers on how to get it set up just the way you want Though most of it you can set in Ableton, you don't really have to do it uh, on here. Like let's just say you don't want it to go from 0 to 127. Uh, when you're in MIDI mode in Ableton, you can just change the parameters. You know, if you only want it to go down to 50, let's say. Uh, very easy to set up. So, And just a quick look here at your MIDI sync preferences in Ableton. I have the FCB 1010 here. And as you can see, the Emu X MIDI 1x1 is my MIDI cable, the MIDI to USB. So I have that set up there. Down here you can see track, remote, input, output, and that's it. Okay, so after a little bit more trial and error, I decided that these um, are the CC commands that work the best. So, you know, 1 through 10 down here. I've written it down so that I just so that I remember. You know, one is uh, CC 12, 13, 14, 15, 20, and then on the top row, 22 through 26. These are the notes that they show up in uh, in Ableton. I was for whatever reason I was finding a conflict in the commands. The other way I had it, it might have been a different issue, but I ended up here and I'm happy with it. Pedal A and B, CC 27 and. Seven. A little bit different from the rest of these, but not a big deal. And I wrote down what commands each one do. Uh, just as another note, so it's also um, sensitive to which bank you're in. I didn't realize that. I thought that Ableton didn't have the ability to tell which bank you were in. So actually, you're not just limited to those 10. You actually do get the full 100. So um, I've gone ahead and programmed bank 1 to be all these effects. Uh, you could certainly go through, take the time, and essentially just do the same exact numbers here. Um, but depending on which bank you're in, is going to affect which command it goes through. So that's actually pretty cool that it that it does that and it works. Uh, one thing just to point out is so I just hit that. That was guitar effect five. Um, the lights over the pedals went out, right? So after I programmed bank one, uh, none of these pedals are working for me. So what I've done actually is I realized if I go up into bank two and I hit 10, I mean probably anything works, but bank 10 lights up those, those lights there. So if you want to be able to use the pedals, 
you know, let's say you're using looper or whatever, and then you want to use the pedals, they're not going to work. Um, you're going to have to jump up into bank two, hit a button, turn them on, and then you're good to go. And that's pretty much it. tip would be uh, let's say you want to use looper so like I would it would be cool to me if I could use looper to get some something with like a lot of reverb going on in the background you know what I mean and then let's say I cut that off and I use different distortion for Once you switch all that, Looper actually doesn't save it as like an audio file, it's kind of in real time, so you could affect how your loop sounds based on what you do afterwards, you know what I mean? So uh, it wouldn't be a bad idea to make two separate channels, so like channel one would be your Looper, get that down, and then switch over to back to whatever other channel, so that whatever effects you have saved on your Looper channel get preserved for your loop and you don't disturb it uh, when you're going back and forth. Because I realized that, I was like, oh, this sucks, because I wanted reverb to only be on... I only wanted reverb on my looped effect. two different channels, one for your loop, one for your guitar. It's even though you can play in the same channel, uh, all the effects are shared. Obviously that makes makes a lot of sense, but uh, just a tip. Hope that helps.